let's learn how to sew a buttonhole. Welcome I do sewing and DIY related content and today we are going to be learning how to use your sewing machine to sew a buttonhole. So for this you are going to want some sort of buttonhole foot. It looks like this. You can get them normally with your sewing machine or you can get them on Amazon and you also are going to need a button. Now you can use different types of buttons. So here you can see this one has those four holes. Then this other button it has you go through the back. But the important part with this is that your button fits into the buttonhole foot and I'll show you in a second specifically what that looks like. But really any button will work and then you're also going to need some sort of fabric. So if you're working on a project, you probably already have that in mind. I'm going to be using some scrap fabric today. So this is a quilting cotton. It is a woven fabric. It does not have much stretch. If you are using something that does have stretch, you probably will want to add some sort of stabilizer to it as your buttonhole opens you know quite frequently you're going to be using it a lot and i'll include a video where i did use a stabilizer as i was adding buttonholes to lace in case you're interested in that but today's video is only going to be focusing on very simple buttonholes using some quilling cotton so now for your project you already probably have marked where your buttonhole is going to be going i'm just adding a little x on my fabric so that i know where to start there's different ways you can do buttonholes though so sometimes you'll do them horizontally sometimes you'll do them vertically it really depends on the pattern that you're using I'm going to be doing mine vertically and just following the sewing machine just to give you the general idea of how to do a buttonhole. So now it's time to move over to our sewing machine. So as you can see, mine has the regular presser foot on it. We are going to need to change that as well as make sure that your sewing machine does have the buttonhole options. Now for my machine specifically, I'm using a Brother CS505 5PRW. So this is the Project Runway Edition. As you can see, I have multiple different options for buttonholes. I'm gonna use 30, which is this rectangular buttonhole. I find it really easy, and that's what I use for most of my projects, but different machines have different options. So now it's time to add the buttonhole foot. So you're just going to replace this as you normally would with any foot on your sewing machine. Normally there is a little like lever on the back and that's how I get mine on. And then there's a little silver part that kind of clips in to hold the foot in place. And that's what you can see here. Now I always double check to make sure that my needle can go down. So using the wheel on the sides, just double check the needle goes through. You don't have to worry about it hitting any of the plastic. And then in the back, there's this little gray tab. And for buttonholes, you are going to want to push that down as well. Well, as this tells the machine the size of your buttonhole and we'll get to that in a second but for your threads be sure that both are facing away so and what I mean by that is off to the side so I have the thread going through the foot and then the bobbin is also off to the side so now here's my button that I'm going to be using for this ex little experiment. And so I have this, I'm going to be putting this into the back of my foot. So there are these two little grooves and you want your button to sit nice and tight back there. So here's another shot. You can see that the button is between those two little grooves. It's sitting nice and tight and the machine now knows what size it is. So now this is what I'm talking about with that little gray tab. We are pulling this down and I'll try to get a better angle for you. But there's these two white markers. So one on the front and one on the back. So here you can see them. This is what's telling the machine the size of your button. So it's using the actual button portion that's in the back to alert this part of the foot of how big your button's going to be. So it knows how far to move up and down for the buttonhole. So here you can see I am just selecting that I want stitch 30. So that is the rectangular buttonhole from earlier. I am putting my fabric now underneath the buttonhole foot. So this is where I had that little X marking it before. So wherever your start and end position is, we're gonna be starting. And now I'm just going to begin sewing. So when you sew, it's very similar to however you sew normally. We are just going to be very gently guiding our fabric. We're not going to be pushing it too hard. We also wanna make sure that the fabric isn't bunched up. And since this is a computerized stitch on most machines, you're just going to essentially just be pushing the fabric in the sense of guiding it. We are not like trying to drag the fabric through. You just wanna let the machine just take it along so that it can complete the entire process. Now for the buttonhole you may be wondering how am I supposed to know when it's done and this can be either through doing this a couple times on some test fabric but most machines have a way to kind of alert you when it's over so mine starts doing a very slow stitch in the exact same spot. I've also had another machine where it just completely stopped and that let you know that the stitch was complete. So this is what the buttonhole looks like. It looks really nice and it looks exactly like the little image did. And now what's time to do is trim off some of these extra threads. So I just use scissors. You could definitely use like some little clips if you had those as well. And then we need to figure out a way to open the buttonhole up. Now there are kits that you can get to do this. So this is what the back of it looks like. I tried to use a darker thread so you'd be able to see it really, really well. But now we want to very carefully open this. 
So you, as I said, you can get a kit to do this. I'm going to be using a seam ripper. So this is the way that I've always done it. And what you wanna do is you wanna very carefully push the seam ripper into the fabric. And then you just want to provide light pressure so that it will kind of rip that fabric for you. You do not wanna do this too hard or you'll kind of end up ripping that stitch that you did since seam rippers are pretty sharp. But if you just do it nice and slowly throughout, you can get that nice opening. And then again, there are kits that will allow it to be a little bit more of a cleaner finish. Then once you have it open, you can test this out, putting your button in and out, seeing if it does fit. And my button is fitting very nicely in this spot. Now, let's say you've done this and you want some troubleshooting tips. So this one worked out well, but sometimes the buttonholes don't always turn out exactly correctly. So in this case here, you can see that my buttonhole is actually too long on one side and then didn't connect all the way on the other side. Normally this happens because you were pulling the fabric while you were trying to do that buttonhole. So the machine actually got an incorrect sizing for how big the buttonhole was supposed to be. So a way to fix this is just to really let the machine take the fabric and you're not gonna be pushing it too much. Next, if you have too much fabric and it's too thick for it, sometimes the buttonhole isn't able to go all the way through. So you just need to play around, maybe add some tissue paper that you can rip off that will just allow it to be a little easier for the machine to get. If you enjoyed this video and you wanna see more, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.